set up in Saudi Arabia, okay? So number one is you have to have a business outside of KSA, and then you have to expand that business into KSA as a foreign owned person, as a foreign person. If you're a GCC national, you are treated as a Saudi national, and therefore you could set up a company from scratch in Saudi Arabia, okay? So that's the clear uh, first piece of criteria. Now, okay, so then you have a choice of basically two different uh, licenses when it comes through MISA. You have an entrepreneur license and you have an investment license. An investment license is split into nine and the entrepreneur license is just one, basically. So for an entrepreneur license, this is targeting startup companies. The startup companies tend to be less than a year or a couple of years old. Uh, and then you need these uh, requirements to set up. You need the, the commercial registration of the company, which you'll obviously have as if you've already set up somewhere else. Random of association or articles of association, which is common practice. You will then have to submit a letter of intent, a startup brief and a pitch deck as to like what your plans are for the next five years when you're expanding into Saudi Arabia. And finally, and most importantly, you need some kind of support letter from a venture capital company um, to basically show that they have uh, invested a certain amount of money into the business. Now, there's no minimum that, uh, that uh, we have been told about from MISA. As a general rule, we haven't probably worked with any companies that have, have had any less funding than kind of half a million uh, US dollars. And part of that as well is that you will need a, uh, a letter or a support letter from a licensed incubator such as Astro Labs as well. Okay, so that's number one entrepreneur license for kind of more of your brand new startups that want to be the next unicorns. Then the other license, the main license really that we're, we're setting up at the moment is the investment license. So the investment license is split into nine types. You have your, uh, to give a few examples and the main ones we've worked with, you've got your services investment license. So this is anything which involves kind of media, tech, software, um, even like installation, maintenance, uh, all falls under all falls under a service investment license. You also have investment licenses such as industrial licenses, and these are basically anything to do with manufacturing. The other main license we get asked about is a trading license. And the trading license is anything when it comes to selling an actual product, uh, like a physical product. Like if I was to sell uh, this bottle of water uh, and sell water in, in Saudi Arabia, I would need a trading license to, to do that. A supermarket for instance, need a trading license. Now, the trading license, you will need a 30 million Saudi Real capital investment. You also need to have three branches across the world and you need 170 million capital investment in the first five years. So anything trading, uh, as I said, 30 million capital investment year one, three branches, 170 million first five years. Those requirements aren't needed for the services investment license or for the industrial uh, license that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so no capital investment needed uh, for those two licenses. What else do you need? You need a trade license, or commercial registration or certificate of incorporation, depending on where you are in the world, your memorandum of association or articles of association, and you need a financial audited statement from the last year. Okay, this financial statement needs to be healthy. And again, like anything in Saudi Arabia, there's never any clear black and white answers when it comes to this information. Healthy, I recommend at least it needs to show some kind of profit and needs to show some uh, large amounts of revenues. Whether that's 100,000 US dollars is, is probably, I think, the lowest that we've, uh, that we've had. Um, but again, we, we can test this uh, as, and when we, uh, as and when we apply for these, these licenses with NISA. Okay. One final point here that I've got at the bottom, it says that you, it cannot be a sold establishment. So your company from wherever you're expanding from has to, uh, it, it cannot be a sole establishment because a sole establishment cannot own another company legally, okay? So normally it would be either like a limited company or an LLC company in, for instance, the UAE or in the UK, wherever it is, 
that expands uh, expands that business. Very good. So, okay. So you, you're able to uh, you're able to set up. We've checked that you you've got all the requirements, and now we have to see what are the activities uh, that you want to do in Saudi Arabia. Okay. So there is an ISIC sheet uh, here. This ISIC sheet will uh, have 4,000 plus activities on it. Each of them will have a different requirement based on uh, what the activity is when, when setting up, okay? For example, I've already mentioned what the trading requirements are. However, there are also third parties involved when it comes to setting up in Saudi Arabia. So, for instance, if you want to set up something to do with telecommunications in Saudi Arabia, you want to do, uh, for instance, SMS uh, services, then you will need to get a service investment license. And from experience, I know you're also going to need to get CITC approval, which is the third party. These third parties are usually at the end of the setup process after your company is completely registered and set up and a case of usually applying through the Abshir portal that we will talk about later on. I've listed here a few of the third parties uh, that are most relevant um, and ones that we, uh, the ones that our clients have experienced in the past. So you've got CITC, which as I said, is a lot of it is to do with more uh, tech and telecommunications. We have your Ministry of Education. So anything kind of more training related uh, and teaching would be under Ministry of Education. We have SAMA, which is your Saudi Central Bank. So anything finance related. Um, and, and you guys will know better than anyone how whether your business will realistically need a third party approval. Uh, so yeah, anything finance related will, will need SAMA uh, approval. Ministry of Media, uh, Ministry of Health, or anything kind of uh, health tech. Uh, and then you've also got then your, your ministry of uh, your commerce as well, which is pretty much involved in most of that, uh, most processes. Cool. Okay, so you picked your activity, you picked your, um, you, you know you've got the requirements set up. So what are the main formation types really? So you've got a limited liability company, You've got a branch or TSO or your joint stock company. Most companies that we set up in Saudi Arabia go down the limited liability uh, company route. Why is that? Because the process, the timeframes, the costings are all the same as setting up a branch. Uh, however, the liability falls solely on the um, parent, uh, on, the, on the Saudi entity, if it's an LLC where if it's a branch, it will fall on the parent company. So if you've set up a UK company and that owns the Saudi entity, if it's a branch, the liability falls on that. If it's an LLC, it's its own, uh, own entity, but still owned by the UK company. The joint stock company is more used for uh, finance companies. Uh, and the reason for that is, is because one of the requirements when getting a SAMA approval and SAMA license is that the company must be a JSC, it must be a joint stock uh, company. Okay, so, <clears throat> so we put this into three main phases when it comes to setting up, okay? So we picture your know, license, we know what do we want to set you up as an LLC, what's next, okay? So stage one, or phase one, the foundations. Step one is we're gonna get the MISA license. The MISA license is the, the license that allows for any kind of foreign direct investment into Saudi Arabia. As of right now, there aren't really any free zones or, or anything like this available in Saudi Arabia. Um, so that is why we would set you up as an LLC company or a branch or a JSC. Um, and what that will then do is give you an, and MISA will give you an onshore license to allow you to set up anywhere in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, basically, no minimum, as, as discussed before, no minimum uh, capital requirements needed unless it's a uh, trading company. 
uh, and the ability to operate anywhere, as I said, in, in, the, in the kingdom. Okay, so this is step one. The MISA license, and to be completely transparent, is one of the easiest steps when it comes to setting up because they've done such a fine job at, um, at, helping, at helping clients. However, things can still go wrong. You might be getting, you might get your MISA application rejected and you, and you don't really know why and you're not able to get answers for them. It might be something to do with your financial statement. It might have something to do with the documents that you've shared with them. Um, bearing in mind that some of these documents need to be shared in Arabic, for instance, which, which clients might not be aware of. Um, so, so all of this is important information to, to know when applying for this license. Step two is to get your name reservation. Now, this is actually a, quite a complicated uh, process with, with uh, the Ministry of Commerce. So when it comes to the name reservation, a general rule is that it will be your parent's company name or with the activity code uh, or activity name that you have selected from that ISIC sheet, for instance. If we were Astrolabs and we were a uh, tech company, our company name in Saudi Arabia would be Astrolabs for information technologies, as an example. If we were a media company, it would be Astrolabs for uh, Astrolabs Saudi Arabia for media, uh, for media or for advertising technologies or whatever it would be, okay? So that's when it comes to the name reservation. A few little tips and tricks here are, it takes about four or five days to get an application approved from a name reservation. So if you don't know the, the general acceptance or rules when trying, to, uh, when trying to reserve a name, you will come up with some serious issues. We've had clients that have come back to us after trying to do the process themselves after about three months with no reason or explanation as to why their names keep getting rejected because there is no clear format as to what, what is accepted or not. It comes just down to experience and the general rules that I've just kind of shared with you that. Okay. Step three, drafting the local articles of association. So the same as what you would have done at any company that you set up. Uh, we will help uh, draft all of these articles of association with you. We know exactly what can and cannot be removed from these articles. Again, making that process a lot more simple and easy uh, when going to get these uh, all, all agreed and, and approved and attested. Um, again, if you change even just one thing that isn't quite right, you might not be told what's, quite, what's wrong and you'll have to go through that whole process again of getting things uh, approved and attested. Um, so again, experience is key when it comes to when it comes to step three. Step four: um, once we've got the articles of the uh, association attested, we will issue you your CR. This is your commercial registration. Um, after this, we will then register you with the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Now this is. This process, phase one, usually takes approximately three to four weeks, um, dependent on how quick you are with the names, making sure there's no rejections, uh, making sure the articles of association is done. We will do that process early with you so we're able just to quickly apply. Um, and as soon as, we're, uh, as soon as we get the MISA license, we can immediately apply for the names. We've already had these discussions for you. All of this saves, saves a lot of time in the process. Okay, so I've written here as well, the annual fees for CR are usually 1,320. Um, the Chamber of Commerce is 2,100, but actually at the moment they've, they've removed this uh, Chamber of Commerce fee. That made us three to four weeks of the, of the process. Stage two, authorization to hire staff. Okay, so we've got a company registered in Saudi Arabia, uh, but actually we're not able to uh, hire anybody or even run the business uh, properly yet because we don't even have a general manager um, associated to the company. Okay. So stage two. At this point, once we've registered the Chamber of Commerce, 
we can then activate the Chamber of Commerce account. However, for this part of the process, you need the GM of the Saudi entity that is written on the Articles of Association or on the commercial registration to travel to Saudi Arabia uh, so that they can sign uh, within the Ministry of Commerce to, to get this activated. I haven't put this as a step six because actually what we can do is activate the Chamber of Commerce when the general manager visits in stage three to save the general manager traveling twice. Um, the alternative is to travel in on, for instance, a tourist visa, and then they're, or if they're already in Saudi, then they then can come in to the Ministry of Commerce and, uh, and sign there to activate that. Okay. Step six. So the first one really of, uh, of stage two is registering you with the Ministry of Labor. Why is this? Because this is the, basically the portal that will allow us to issue the general manager's visa. This process alone with registering with the Ministry of Labor can take anything up to 20 to 25 working days um, because of how the process is in, in, in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Step seven is registering for the GOSI systems. Now, the GOSI organization for social insurance in Saudi Arabia. Why is this essential? Because this is where you will register your Saudi national employees. Why is that important? Because to run a business in Saudi Arabia, you have to follow the Saudiization rules. Now, the Saudiization rules, at least for companies less than five people, is you need one Saudi national. Your first employee must be a Saudi national. If you were to have, for instance, foreign owned uh, your GM of your Saudi entity is, for instance, a British uh, national. Your first employee needs to be a Saudi national, and they will need to be hired within six to twelve months uh, of the of the setup. Because when you come to renew the general manager's karma, you won't be able to do so unless you have a Saudi national. Uh, registered. Okay. There is the NITICAT system, which shows you exactly how many Saudi nationals you need as a percentage uh, when setting up in, uh, sorry, when doing business in Saudi Arabia. General rule of thumb 25% of your staff need to be Saudi nationals. But as I said, that can vary anything up to kind of 50%, depending on what exact sector you're in. Um, but as a general rule, go for 25% and you can check the NITICAT system uh, to check that that's correct. Other things to be aware from here are your GOSI contributions. So for a Saudi national employee, you will need to contribute as a company 12% of their salary to the GOSI portal. Okay. The employee will need to add 10% of his salary or her salary to the uh, GOSI portal. For a non-Saudi national, the employer must add 2% uh, to, the, to the platform. Okay. Step eight, registering for the general authority of Zakat and tax. So this is your Gazat, okay? Every company that registers in Saudi Arabia must register for Gazat. If you don't register within six to 12 months of setting up the business, then you will receive a fine and the fines vary, but usually of about 10,000 Saudi Rial um, for, for, late, uh, for late registration. What are the main taxes in Saudi Arabia? You have 20% tax on net profit, 15% tax on VAT. The 15% tax on VAT, funny enough, was... Uh, was raised not too long ago from 5% to 15% on a temporary basis. However, um, I, I don't see any, any chances of that coming back down. So I think it will most likely stay at 15%. And most people have forgotten that, that it was temporary to begin with. So withholding taxes is anything between 5 to 20%. As I said before, we, we have done webinars and had tax specialists on this show a couple of times in the past talking about exactly all of these, as I know it's such an important topic for people. And you can find that on our insights on the setupinsaudi.com website and dive a little bit deeper as to what do you mean by five to 20% in withholding tax? Basically, it depends on 
why you're sending money out of the country, uh, where you're sending that money to, because some countries have double tax treaties, uh, and yeah, it, it varies heavily. Um, we recommend always using tax specialists uh, for all of these when based in Saudi. We use a tax specialist when it comes to registering for our Gaza as well, because we've heard some horror stories in the past when people have done it incorrectly uh, and therefore suffered for it later on in the process. And that's a key point actually probably to mention here is that if any of these processes or steps are done wrong or they've expired or there's mistakes, it basically causes every other system in this process to not work uh, correctly. So, so, so important to make sure that when you're setting up in Saudi Arabia, that it's done correctly. Step nine, get a national address. So a, a national address is, is required uh, when setting up in Saudi Arabia. Why? Because you can't get your Gazat registration. You can't get your um, uh, bank account open without a, without a national address. So you have to have a physical address uh, when setting up in Saudi Arabia. Now, we learned as Ashraz very early on that this was needed. We have an agreement that allows companies to set up under, under our co-working space. Um, so we can provide that national address for you. Um, we don't just think of it as providing a national address though. One thing we also are striving for is to uh, give you that co-working space to actually use. And we were also trying to build this amazing community in Saudi Arabia, uh, in Riyadh, um, and an online community as well, where we're able to offer introductions to other companies, where we're able to uh, help with uh, help companies find specific partners in certain areas. Um, even if it's just a case of a company wanting to ask us or fellow uh, multinational companies uh, questions uh, when it comes to their expansion in Saudi Arabia and their growth in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and, that's, and that's one thing we're really pushing for here at, here at Astro Labs. So yeah, national address, very important. We can provide this or alternatively, if you already have an office, then welcome to register on those offices as well. One thing to be aware of is that we've heard some stories where you're not able to get an address. Um, you, you, you Company and a landlord will want you to maybe have a Saudi bank account or have a general manager at least uh, to get a national address. But you can't do that um, because you need the national address to be able to get those to get the bank account. You get stuck in this horrible black hole of I haven't got a bank account, so I need an address. I can't get an address because I haven't got a bank account. Um, so again, something that we're very, very aware of uh, early on in the setup process. Step 10, uh, and finally in, in phase two, is we will issue you your GM visa. Now, again, this is a very specific visa for the general manager of that Saudi entity. It's not the same as your usual kind of working or business visa that you'll be getting. It'll be a specific visa for the general manager. It will be a one-time entry into the kingdom, okay? Usually to get this, you will basically, <clears throat> we will issue you this, this visa. You will go to your local uh, local resident, <clears throat> residency provider or visa provider in your country. So for instance, in the UAE, they have BFS. You will then go, you'll get your blood work and your, uh, and your medical done. Uh, it's usually blood and uh, blood work and x-ray. <clears throat> and then once you... Um, once you've done this, they will submit it to the Saudi embassy and you will then get your one-time entry visa into the kingdom. Okay. But because it is a GM visa, it means that sometimes there's normally less requirements needed. You don't need the education forms, uh, certificates, et cetera, attested uh, when getting this. Uh, you don't need the employment contract when getting this because he's all, he or her, she is already the GM of that company. Okay. That's the end of phase two. That, that approximately takes another kind of three to four weeks to complete. As I said, the Ministry of Labor itself can take anything up to 25 days to, to get done. Stage three will be the GM visiting and then us opening the, the bank account and registering with all the relevant portals for the general manager. Okay, so step 11 of this 16 step process 
GM visits uh, KSA. They will need to do a medical again in Saudi Arabia. They will also need health insurance. Now, two important things there. Um, one, we, you make sure you know where you're going when it comes to getting the, the medical done. Uh, and my team, uh, Ashraf Saudi, uh, Saudi team, will support you and go with you with all of these steps. So we will be there every step of the way with, with you. Um, so we will take you to go get your medical done. And at the same time, we will be applying for your health. You need a local health insurance. So even if you have one of these health insurances that you know covers multiple regions, you actually need to have a local health insurance to help complete the ACARMA process. A little tip for you here is that to get that health insurance, you need to be paying out of a Saudi bank account. And again, it gets stuck into that situation where you don't have a Saudi bank account yet because you don't have a GM. Uh, and therefore, uh, you, you don't have, uh, you're not able to complete this process. Uh, and again, you can get stuck into that black hole um, of not having a bank account and not having a, a GM ICANA. So again, we will help provide all of that for you, and we will have it paid out of our uh, Saudi account to uh, pay for uh, to be able to produce a Sadad. Um, Produce the SADA number, which is basically what's needed um, to pay for the pay for the health insurance. Step twelve: convert the GM visa to residency. So this is then your GM visa. Well, we've had the medical done, the health insurance. Now we just have to wait for the ACARMA to be to be completed. This usually takes about seven, five to seven working days. Okay, we will always ask our clients to at least stay. For 10 working days in the kingdom whilst we complete this process. Why? Because the, when it's, it's, it's one entry visa when you're coming in, you can't actually leave once the Akama process is, is underway. Um, and because everything in Saudi Arabia, as we know, it, is, uh, it, it can vary in time. You're working with tons of different ministries uh, when setting up in, in Saudi Arabia. Um, nothing is ever smooth sailing. You've always got to expect the unexpected over there. Um, so yeah, 10, 10 working days is, is always recommended at this point. So whilst we're getting the Akama, there's a few things uh, we can do. Well, once the Akama is done, we can register you with the McKean portal. Now the McKean portal is very, very important for a company. This is what will allow you to basically uh, get re-entry visas uh, number one, for the general manager uh, or for any residence permit. So to allow that general manager who now has a residency in Saudi Arabia, they'll need to get a McKean portal and apply for a re-entry visa, uh, which allows them to come and go as they please. Often I'll get asked questions then here about how often does a, a GM need to stay in Saudi Arabia? The answer there is no uh, kind of minimum. They will need to be there to obviously renew their Akama, which is a yearly renewal. Um, however, they can, uh, you know, keep going backward and forward from, for instance, the UAE to Saudi Arabia. So they've registered with the McKean portal. They will then register with the Abshir portal. The Abshir portal is very specific for the general manager themselves. And they will basically have their company registered under their Abshir portal. What does the Abshir portal allow them to do? Going back to those third party approvals at the very beginning, uh, for instance, if you want to get a Ministry of Media approval, you can apply for this through your Abshir portal once the company is, uh, is set up. Okay, and you can see here, it also allows you to have all of their personal files and services like your driving license, passports, rent, et cetera, et cetera. Step 15, we've added two more portals here because these are new to setting up in Saudi Arabia. You have your keyword portal and your Mudad portal. The, the keyword platform is actually great. It's, a, it's an electronic platform that is anything to do with your uh, HR in, in Saudi Arabia. It will allow you to do things like uh, apply for a karma transfers for, uh, for people. So if you're hiring within Saudi Arabia, which many many people do and it's highly recommended you can actually do all of this now through the keyword portal and they even have things like employment templates etc on them um so it's a really good system it's adding more and more services basically on a on a 
weekly basis, bi-weekly basis, um, and, and will be one of the most used platforms, I believe, uh, by the company and by the general manager. <clears throat> the Moodad portal is a new uh, payroll system uh, by the government and is basically used for compliance. So it, it, this is to stop people who are adding Saudi nationals, for instance, on their GOSI system, saying, oh, we're paying them 4,000 or whatever it is. The minimum is 4,000 for it to add as a Saudi national. So it's to stop people saying, oh, we're paying them 10, and actually they're only giving them 1,000, because you have to now register all of this through the MUDAD portal to make sure that you're paying your staff what you've, uh, what you've agreed on, on contract with them. Now, the final step, uh, and those of you that are already used to the Middle East region will know what a pain this can be when it comes to opening bank accounts. Um, so is, I was gonna say it's no different in Saudi Arabia. It's a little bit different. It, we've actually got some good partnerships in place with the likes of uh, SAB, Saudi Fantasy Bank, and even Emirates MBD we've worked closely with in the, in the past. Um, and actually, as long as, because we're working with such a great network of companies, these banks are happy to work with us. because We are helping either the next unicorns or these multinational companies uh, that, are, that are expanding into the region. Um, and as long as you're able to fill out these documents, we can usually get this process done. In, in the UAE, this process can take up to something like six months. We have clients or I know people, friends who, are still waiting after six months to get bank accounts set up. Uh, we like to think that we can get this done within a, within a few weeks, um, as long as these documents are all shared correctly. So a few examples, AOA of the parent company, AOA of the local company, which we would have done for you anyway, ID copies of the GM. Sometimes you need ID copies of the shareholders of the uh, parent company. And each of these banks will have a very specific form uh, an application procedure. So you will have a whole uh, a whole list of um, of companies, uh, a, whole, a whole list of uh, information that's needed. Okay, so that's the end of the that's the end of the setup process. But you you may have been expecting that to be short and short and sweet, but anything in Saudi Arabia is is not that. It, it's lengthy, um, and also it can be costly at times. So. Every, every one of you will be doing their own cost benefit analysis, I'm sure. Just to help out with that, I've put here a few of the yearly costs to consider. So for the service investment license that we spoke about, which would be, I'm sure, the majority of your companies, there is a 62000 a year uh, fee for the service investment license. You also have here a list of the other uh, fees. You've got company registration renewals, you've got your WASL renewal charges, which is now SPL, which is basically for your national address. So that's uh, just specifically for registering an address, not for actually paying for the office itself. We offer some renewal fee, uh, some renewal services. We offer office space. You've got your ICARMA renewals, and this again is important. So that general manager who uh, may be a foreign national will need to renew their ICARMA each year. And you need a few other renewals like the McKean portal and even the keyword portal, which is new, uh, also has about a 1,100 uh, Saudi Rial charge on, on that. Um, we recommend companies to at least uh, have around 90 to 100,000 Saudi Rial in kind of your, your running costs when it comes to office licenses and, re, and renewals and government fees uh, each year. Um, but of course, the opportunity in Saudi Arabia easily uh, uh, overshadows that with, without a shadow of doubt. So, um, <clears throat> um, so let's go through some of these uh, through some of these questions. The renewal of the MISA license will cost sixty two k. Okay, so the entrepreneur license, as we mentioned before, um, is the uh, is about 2000 a year for the first five years. For the service investment license, so for anyone who isn't a BC backed startup, needs to pay 62,000 year two, okay? 
So 62,000 is the yearly fee for a MISA license. Do we get GOSI Bank, uh, GOSI back in terms of tax rebate or it's an expense or does an employee get it as, at, at the end of service contract? Okay, it's a good question. So with the GOSI itself for the social insurance, this will be what goes to the uh, to the employee at the end and to the Saudi national. So there's no, uh, as far as I'm aware, no uh, contribution to that Saudi national um, to that session, to that Saudi national employee. When it comes to the tax rebate, it's a good question. I'm not sure actually. I would need to check with a with a Saudi uh, with a tax expert on that, um, as I, as I'm not sure. For a services company, would the 20% tax be applicable to profits annually? Uh, yeah, so basically the 20% tax is not dependent on what activity you're doing. It is based on the, um, it is basically based on if you are a foreign owned entity. So if you are 100% foreign owned, you need to pay 20% tax on the net profits uh, each year. Uh, Tony, yeah, so the 62K, sorry, uh, my slide wasn't quite correct. The, the 62K is a renewable fee each year for the service investment license. Is there a clarity from MISA on the requirements to register as a regional head office? Uh, yeah, uh, we can share with this uh, separately, uh, Amjad. So, uh, MISA have got a few extra requirements when it comes to if you want it to be your regional head office. Um, so this can be shared with you uh, later on if you want to either reach out to one of the team uh, or you can reach out to myself. I'm happy to share that uh, that information that information with you. Is it the only path for a company to set up in KSA? If you're a foreign owned company and you want to set up in Saudi Arabia, then MISA is currently the only route into the, into the kingdom. They've been talking about free zones for a very long time. Um, I believe a logistics free zone will be opening soon, but again, they, 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 that was meant to open three years ago and hasn't done. Uh, and we're not sure exactly on what that process will be yet. We're not sure whether MISA will be involved uh, whether you still need the MISA license for these free zones, we're, we're unsure. Uh, so yeah, as it is right now, the, the MISA route by expanding a business into Saudi Arabia is the uh, only route. I just need a CR, no person hired, and all invoicing will be done in the UAE. Is it possible and uh, will we still be uh, taxable? Uh, yes. So. You, you'll need a CR uh, if you want to be doing uh, if you want to be doing business and you know hire um, if you want to bid for projects etc in Saudi Arabia you need to have a general manager um, because of all of those reasons explained earlier regarding all of those AppShip portals McKean portals needing to register for tax when you've registered the company all of this needs a general manager on the books so that general manager will need an Akama. And therefore, you will also need a Saudi national if that general manager is not a Saudi national. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Will you need to, will you be taxable? Or, yeah, of course, anyone who's doing business in Saudi Arabia and you're invoicing from your Saudi entity will be taxed on that. Are there ways to mitigate taxes? Of course there are. You'll be able to, I'm sure some companies are probably invoicing from other countries. And therefore, um, their revenue on their Saudi entity is less. Um, however, I would recommend speaking to tax uh, any tax specialist about, about this. The main reason you're going to need to set up that company is because companies in Saudi Arabia, as particularly the bigger projects, you will not win those projects going forward in the future if you don't have a Saudi registered company. It's as simple as that. We're already seeing it now. So most of our clients that are, we're setting up, as I said, are multinational companies, and all of them have worked in Saudi Arabia for years and years and years. 
they are now being told that they won't win the next project or they can no longer work with that business that they've been working for, for working with for years unless they have a company registered. And look, I see it from both sides of view, but from the Saudi point of view, they don't want to keep on uh, pumping these millions and billions worth of dollars into the country for uh, foreign businesses to come in, work, and take all of that money out of Saudi. They want them to employ Saudi nationals. They want them to pay a little bit of tax on top of that uh, to get that money reinvested into, uh, into the kingdom. Um, and that's the reason they're obviously pushing this going forward. With regards to the withholding tax, would it apply on the GM's personal salary if any of it is transferred out of the country through their personal bank accounts? Okay, so that's an interesting one. So the GM's salary is, is not taxable. Um, there is no income tax when it comes to Saudi Arabia. You'll need to check with a, a specialist as to whether that person transferring that money uh, into another personal account in a different country is taxable. I don't believe so. Um, I don't believe if I was to transfer my money from my from a Saudi bank account to a UAE account, UAE account, that would be taxable. Uh, but it's worth double checking with a tax specialist uh, on that. Do we need to translate all the documents into Arabic? Uh, yeah, so everything, the financial statement is fine in English. Uh, everything else now needs to be in Arabic. It used to be English or Arabic. However, um, that has now changed. All of these Ministry of Commerce and, and uh, yeah, basically these Ministry of Commerce want these documents in, uh, in Arabic. Uh, what we can do at Astrolabs is, is do that translation uh, for you and we'll include that obviously in, in whatever we, we charge in our, um, in, in, in our agreements with you guys. So um, it's a case of whatever is easiest uh, for you, okay? Why would a software company need to register in Saudi? If we're a global tech company with no physical product and would like to sell, oh, and would like to sell Saudi customers, surely we wouldn't have to register a subsidiary in Saudi. Look, if you're going from B to C, absolutely not. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying by any means that you have to, you have to set up. If you can do your business in Saudi Arabia and not be set up there, absolutely uh, carry on. I'm saying that if you want to work with any of the big companies in Saudi Arabia, and that's just big companies for now, that will, that will change in the future. Um, these companies will want you to, they, will, they won't work with you unless you're registered in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so it completely depends on your on your business model. Uh, join the meeting late. Can I get a link to view the recording later? I think it's time to expand into the KSA. Yep, no problem at all. We'll share uh, after this uh, call. Everyone that registered it for the webinar will get a link to the uh, to the recording. We will also be adding this to our Astrolabs Grow site. Astrolabs Grow will um, uh, Astrolabs Grow will be our basically our platform that I want to share with you guys and I want the team to share with you guys everything you could possibly need when expanding into Saudi Arabia, as well as it acts as a platform where you can interact with one another uh, and ask each other for advice that have already gone through the painful processes. So it's a case of where we can learn uh, from each other. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll share those links with you for the webinar. Just confirming you said 100k for annual cost slash license and government fees. Uh, yeah, so basically in year two, we recommend to have around 90,000 to 100,000 Saudi real. Reason being is you've got your MISA license, 62,000, your CR, your McKean portal, Abshire portal, all of these other portals, etc., add to another kind of six, 7,000. So that's about 70,000. You then have your office address. Uh, again, it depends on where you go, but I think we're very, very competitive. We charge 16,800 a year uh, for our uh, for our office address, uh, which takes you up to what, like 88,000. Uh, you've then got your GMs or 78,000, and then you've got your GMs in Karma, 
uh, as well to add on and include in that, uh, including, you know, their health insurance uh, and the medical exam, uh, which adds up to like another kind of 12, 13,000. So all of that together, approximately between 90 to 100,000 uh, salary out as kind of your running costs. If I have a Saudi national partner on paper, are the fees the same? So when it comes to our setup fee, it will be the exact same. Reason being because the government fees in year one are all the exact same. Um, so, and actually even in year two, sorry, all of the government fees will be the same and the process is the same. You still need to get the MISA license. You still need to get your CI. You still need to get the, uh, the GM visa. If you're GM, is a Saudi national, that would bring down the price. Why? Because you've got no GM visa, no Ikama to get for that general manager, okay? Will, where it will affect you slightly and uh, will be on your taxes. So if you're a 50% Saudi national, 50% foreign business, tax will only be applied on the 50% foreign business. And then you'll have a 2.5% Zakat uh, tax basically on uh, on the Saudi side, on the Saudi owned part of the business. I believe the two and a half percent, I'm not sure, but it might, I think it's on revenue as opposed to taxes, uh, sorry, on opposed to profit. Whereas on the foreign owned side, it's 20% on the net profit. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, so is this a good ballpark figure as well for year one? Uh, yeah, Roger, happy to share with you our, our fee structure. But we charge, yeah, just slightly over 100000 for year one, which will include even all of our like service fees, et cetera, to get you set up. Reason why it's more in year or the similar in year two is because that MISA license, um, which is 62000 in year two, is less in, in year one. It's, it's about 12000 in year one. Um, otherwise, we would help with Astro Labs would be working significantly at a, at a loss uh, for a lot of three to four months worth of work. How long does the process uh, uh, from start to bank account usually take? So usually it should take three to four months. This can vary heavily and a lot of it will depend on the client and on the government ministries. So for example, if the uh, company that we're working with is taking a long time to agree on their articles of association, we'll do the drafting, but eventually essentially you guys the company will need to agree on the aoa if that takes two three weeks or two months to agree to then you've got to add two months onto the process right um the same with the name reservation there's a few other things which can take longer uh again some of it will depend on the ministries ministries are very very important here ministries in saudi arabia do make mistakes they are human um and therefore any kind of mistake made by those ministries, we will be in the process to get them fixed as quickly as possible. Um, but again, some of these things can't be told. Um, as a general rule, three to four months to, to set up. Is there any extra facility like less fee for registration and tax benefits if we are an IT startup for, CM, for CRM service with new products like any free zones? Uh, no, uh, nothing like any uh, any free zones or anything at the, at the moment. Um, as I said before, they, they've been talking about these for years and years and years. Uh, nothing's come to fruition. They have the MISA license, which is your onshore license that gets set up. And this is how all the companies are setting up at the moment in the, in the region. Um, also, just to be aware of like the startup versus uh, where startups can benefit is on a less fee for MISA uh, to pay less. However, they will only approve the top, top startups kind of attracting to the region. So how they do this, they basically do it on, is the company heavily funded? Is it funded from a VC company uh, that they recognize? So if you are sponsored by a Global Ventures or a Riot Ventures or whoever it might be, um then absolutely you you'll be approved i'm sure for the MISA entrepreneur license if not then unfortunately there's there's not much uh not much help <clears throat> if all billings are done from the non-saudi entity uh on the books 
the Saudi entity will be making a loss. Is that allowed and for how long? Uh, so yeah, it, it's allowed as long as you're paying your uh, paying your fees and paying your government licenses, etc. Then I, I don't see any uh, any issue uh, any issue with this. You'll obviously need to have your Saudi nationals, etc., on the on the book. So in, in that point of view, uh, they're, they're still happy to an extent, I guess, because you're hiring in Saudi Saudi Arabia, you're paying your license fees. Um, one thing to be aware of will just be the companies that you're working with. Some companies will want to get billed from a Saudi entity, not get billed from a UAE or a, another country's entity. So uh, a lot of it will depend on your clients and if they're happy to, to bill outside, etc. Okay. Do the translations need to be certified by a legal translator? 